these speakers go from this to this. Yeah. These are probably the most interesting speakers I have covered the entire year. So I was at the Toronto Audio Fest 2022 and I saw these speakers and I said, load it into my car, I'm stealing them. And they said, hey, Jay, um, they're still prototype. And I said, well, no worries. I just want to talk more about it because this is such an interesting design. Now, usually I don't cover prototype speakers, but this, I mean, come on, come on, you see it. This is so interesting. So I had to bring it in my room. And also they uh, know my room, so they were interested in my feedback in my room with my experiences of listening to multiple different speakers. They wanted my feedback for the final production as well. So killing two stones with, sorry, killing two birds with one stone. And so I will very much cover the actual final production when it's ready. But in the meantime, I wanted to kind of make myself drool and make you guys drool about these speakers. So let's talk about it. These speakers are a full bamboo design and Triart is known for that. In fact, Triart is actually a local brand uh, in Canada that is just located in Kingston. So they're kind of neighbors to me. And I covered one of their open baffle speakers before on my channel, which I'll link in the description below. Pretty old video, but worth the watch in my opinion. So they actually make open baffle speakers. So this speaker, without exception, starts with an open baffle speaker stand. Now this speaker stand can be used with any other speakers, but for this system, it uses the mini monitor that Triart has, and it is a single driver mini monitor with a super tweeter. So very unique and very interesting. And of course, everything is again made out of bamboo. It comes with an external crossover that you adjust for the level of the mini monitor. So when you have them connected, the open baffle sub or the open baffle sub built into the stand is at full blast at all times. So you have to adjust it uh, depending on your room, how far you want it out of the room so that the open baffle speakers load the room properly. Now the good thing about the open baffle system is that it kind of has a different presentation entirely from its traditional sealed box subwoofers in that it loads the room pretty evenly and doesn't get boomy all that much as long as you experiment with it. But the important thing here is that you have to be willing to experiment with a system like this. As it is, just with the mini monitor, it has a very pure sound. And the mini monitor, it doesn't have much bass, but that's not what they're known for. At low to medium volumes, they have a very pure mid-range and high frequency that has sweetness and delicacy to it that is very pure sounding. And that's what some people really love about mini monitor is that pure sound that you get out of them that is just clean, that's pure, and that is silky and really sweet. And that is what these mini monitors do. And especially if you match it with the sub or the speaker stand in this case, then you have the flexibility to adjust for the output level of the top monitor, allowing you to have good bass authority and balance and all that migrated into your room. And it's really up to you now to adjust it and click that in in your room. And once you do, let me tell you, it would take some work, but you get a really nice, bloomy, not really deep bass, but really nice, warm, mid-range, and that mini monitor pureness added to it. You get this really nice blend of a sound that you might pleasantly be surprised about. But of course, with any mini monitor, there is a downside, and that is that at loud volumes, it does become beamy or a little bit aggressive in the top upper frequencies. And that is not just with this mini monitor, but with virtually any mini monitor, especially if it's using a single driver, it's just simply a physical limitation. Now, the horns. So this is exactly why the conical horns were implemented into this design. Steve, the engineer or the designer for Triart, found that the top monitor, the mini monitor sounded pure, great. He loved the sound of it. He just wanted to amplify it for louder volumes so that it doesn't beam as much. 
He even added these little divots or little bamboo pieces, he calls it jelly beans, to kind of diffuse the sound and decompress so that you don't get that horn sound or horn effect where it's kind of honky. So he wanted to make it natural as possible by diffusing that sound. And while I don't think that this is an uncolored version of the mini monitors, I found it better. And personally, I found in my room as well is that these speakers simply sound better with the horn on than the mini monitor by itself. So it colors the sound, but in a good way. So while he didn't fully achieve amplifying the mini monitors without any coloration, he did manage to make the sound better. Well, you may ask better how. And one of the goals that he did achieve actually was at louder volumes, it beams less and is much less aggressive when you put the horns on. So for louder listening volumes, the horn system just simply does better than the mini monitor by itself. Now to my ears with the horns on, you definitely hear what the horns are doing. It is coloring the sound to have that little bit of that horn characteristic. But with horn instruments and jazz and string instruments, some recordings that are recorded really well sound just absolutely beautiful with these speakers when it is clicked in perfectly. And when I say clicked in perfectly, I mean everything matters with these speakers. But before we get to that, you may be asking, well, aren't these speakers, horn speakers, a little bit big for your room? And I have to say that they're not because they're actually meant to be intimate horns. Yes, these speakers are meant to be in close proximity to the listener. And so I experimented this in my room by moving the chair way back and started moving closer to the speakers. And I have to say that I probably sat very close to these speakers, about maybe two feet or three, very close. And that sounded best. And you know when it clicks in because when you're far away from the speakers, it's a more of a two dimensional sound and a little bit uh, disjointed. It doesn't seem as coherent and then as you move closer to the speakers, it becomes more coherent and then it just clicks and everything is more balanced and it just sounds right. It just sounds better. Surprisingly, you do get imaging with these speakers when they are set up right. They are towed in slightly so that the horns are almost uh, facing my ears, but not quite, just, just off to the side. So playing around with toe in is important, but the most important thing is you're sitting distance away from the speakers. You want to be sitting pretty close to these speakers for that perfect coherency. Also, the height of the listening position matters as well. When I had these speakers at ear level to the top horn, I found that I was hearing more of the top horn more distinctively and less of a balanced sound. But when I had my ears kind of right between the top horn and the bottom horn, right between, that's when everything clicked in and made everything sound more coherent, balanced, and just the music flowed much more naturally to my ears. And when you have everything clicked in, this speaker can be quite beautiful, especially in the mid-range, especially with horn instruments, guitar, well-recorded music, and it really portrays it in a different way, which can be very emotional of a sound with certain recordings. But keep in mind that with horn speakers like this, not all recordings work. Some recordings such as country or some not very well recorded music that contained strings even, didn't sound quite right to me with these speakers. And that is perfectly normal because these are nothing like other speakers. It is not meant to be a jack of all trades and be able to play with all recordings perfectly. But with certain recordings, you just get the magic that you simply can't with point source speakers like the Arendels or even the Bacard S400 Mark II that I value highly. Now, I'm not saying those speakers are bad. Those are jack of all trades speakers. These speakers do things much differently. I mean, just look at the damn thing. It doesn't take a genius to realize that a speaker like this and horn speakers are going to sound extremely different from a point source or traditional speakers that you may come across. Whether you like the sound or not is entirely up to preference. It's definitely a colored sound. It's not going to be a neutral, balanced studio sound or even a point source that you may be used to, but certain instruments just sound just magical with speakers like this that produce a more of a natural amplification to certain instruments that give tonality that is more real, more vivid, and arguably a more enjoyable experience with certain recordings that just simply cannot be replicated 
with point source speakers. With a speaker like this, everything is different, including imaging. Imaging is not as pinpoint as a dual concentric design or speakers like point source speakers that you may have encountered in the past, like Arendels and Bocards and you know Kev speakers and so on. But you do get imaging, and that is quite surprising with a horn speaker like this because my experience with horn speakers that are that it doesn't image as well. Now, same thing goes for this speaker. It doesn't have a pinpoint imaging, but it does have imaging and everything is connected. Now, in comparison, some speakers like Wilson Audio, Arendel, you know, Focal, Magical, those kind of point source speakers, you may get imaging where one is very distinct and then there's blackness in between and then there's again, imaging. So side imaging, center imaging, phantom center, and then you get imaging and then there's blackness in between. As the overall sound presentation of a horn speaker like this is that you get imaging and then there is a connection. Imaging that is a little bit more connected rather than separated. So therefore, if you're someone that is used to a imaging capability where everything can be pinpointed, then a horn speaker may not be for you. But for the overall enjoyment of everything just floating in the air as you speak, like just full bloom kind of sound that is more intimate, that's what these intimate horns are for. I have to say most of the magic with these kind of horn speakers are in the mid range and that is no exception with these speakers as well. As female vocals, some string instruments and some, some recordings just sound absolutely beautiful on these speakers and really has that kind of full bloom, warm type of sound. And again, that warmness can be adjusted depending on how far you take these speakers out of the room. If you want a little bit more warmness, simply have these open baffle uh, subs do a little bit of more work by lowering the output of the mini monitors on the top. But if you're after a more balanced sound, then simply crank up the top monitor and there you go, you have a more balanced sound that follows suit. The bass is interesting as well because open baffle subs or speakers in general load the room in a different way than a traditional boxed design. So your room is essentially the box. And so how you set them up will determine how the bass capability is for the most part. But in my room, I found the bass to be textured. While it doesn't extend really, really deep, it has good enough punch. And in my room, it really filled the room quite nicely, blending with the top horn, allowing for a more of a warmer presentation, which I liked and the way I set it up was for that kind of sound in my room. Now gear matching and down to cabling, and I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, down to cabling matters with these speakers. Now I've tried multiple different cables, but I again settled on the legendary Western Electric 16GA speaker cables that I imported from Japan. And this cable in a horn system, if never heard this cable with a horn system, it really makes the mid range a magical masterpiece with a lot of horn systems. And that was no exception here. It did help the system quite a bit, allowing that mid-range magic to really shine with the rest of the system that I had going on. Now, I've tried several amplifiers, including solid states like the Benchmark AHB2s, the Gatto monoblocks, the Burson GT monoblocks, and so on. But for my personal liking, I liked Tube with, with no surprise, with horn speakers like this. So I've tried multiple different tube amplifiers, including the Fluxion Audio, which is made in Canada, and the 300B amplifier from Wilsonton, the R300, the vintage Dynaco SD70, and now going up in price, I tried the Vindicator from AudioNote, my shoe from AudioNote, the Tonemeister integrated amplifier, and the Transmission NAT monoblocks. So I tried multiple different tube amplifiers in various different price ranges with these speakers. And I have to say that I really like tubes with this speaker. Now, my personal favorite was actually not the most expensive, but the Vindicator from AudioNote. Overall, it was the most balanced sound I got out of these speakers, which gave me really nice neutrality at the same time, uh, that mid-range flavor. So not totally neutral, but colored in a way that I personally found it to be at, at a good balance. And then actually my close second favorite was actually the Dynaco ST70, which is a vintage amplifier that can be had for about thousand Canadian dollars these days. It was definitely a more warmer sound with the Dynacos, but I found the sound to be overall more inviting and very musical uh, with certain instruments, especially just bring out magic and beauty with these speakers. So not always the more, it's not always the case that the most expensive gear wins. In fact, I found my NAT monoblocks, which is the most expensive of the bunch here that I bought, 
to be the worst with these speakers. And while I find the NATs to be one of my favorite amplifiers of all time that I have owned, which I'll talk more about in a separate video, I just simply didn't find it to be a good match with the triarch speakers, and that's sometimes how it goes. More expensive just simply does not mean it's a better match with every speaker out there, and this was one of those cases. So with correct placement, including listening height, listening distance, and the gear matching, as well as cabling, these speakers can sound pretty darn wonderful, especially in the mid-range, giving you a beauty that is not really existent in other speakers, especially with certain recordings that pertains to jazz, saxophone, vocals, guitars, and so on, especially well-recorded music does extremely well with speakers like this. But again, I told you again, it depends on the recording. Some recordings just simply doesn't work with a speaker like this. Not all speakers play all music equally well, and a specialized speaker like this really gives a special sauce to certain recordings and certain types of instruments and emotion that you simply can't get out of other designs while not doing so hot, not doing so well on certain recordings. It just simply doesn't work. And that is a inherent design of a speaker like this. And while some people may find this as a downside or a deal breaker, personally for me, I don't find it as a downside. I find it as an inherent design choice, especially in a specialized speaker like this that combines multiple different technologies to bring beauty with certain recordings. So that's pretty much it for me. I find this speaker to be extremely interesting and cannot wait for the final production model and to hear it to see what improvements they have made with these speakers, especially with the implementations that Triart told me is in place for the final production model. So that's pretty much it for me. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful to you, interesting or entertaining, please click that like button. It helps my channel out tremendously and it doesn't cost you anything. And make sure to subscribe for more future videos like this. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Until next time.